isn't just about delicious cuisine and luxury sports cars. With its rich history and culture come fantastic filmmaking as well. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Italian films. Okay. For this list, we've chosen films made and produced in Italy. With the majority of the spoken language being Italian, based on a mix of their iconic nature, how memorable they are, and their critical and or commercial success. Number 10, Umberto D. Umberto Domenico Ferrari. Simple yet touching, Umberto D. is a character-driven film which provides social commentary in post-World War II Italy. Secondo lei ci sarà la guerra. Ma. Relating the somber tale of a lonely pensioner who's struggling to make ends meet, Umberto D. boasts a superb cast, with the titular character being portrayed by a professor acting for the first time. Signor Umberto, che stai grave? As gestures and body language tell the story of this old man and his beautiful relationship with his lovable dog, dialogue is infrequent, and this is particularly evident in the scene where he first begs for money but retracts. Hypnotic in its simplicity, this powerful neorealist film will bring you to tears. Sta fermo. Number 9, La Strada. You'll hear Federico Fellini's name a few times on this list. The master director created a very human story in La Strada, where viewers are introduced to Gelsomina, a carefree soul who is sold to Zampano, a ruthless, cruel street performer. She believes that he is the man of her life. Unfortunately, he uses her as a way to make ends meet. No, 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 no. But as turbulent as it is, it's their relationship that makes this film so moving and emotional. With a fantastic musical score and remarkable cinematography, La Strada is a sad tale of an unlikely romance that also won the first Oscar for Best Foreign Language Film in 1956. Number 8, The Conformist. Dottor Marcello. Ma noi dobbiamo esserci, abbiamo delle responsabilità, ma guardate. With brilliant performances and an unforgettable visual style, Bernardo Berlucci's The Conformist sees Marcello Clerici, a fascist flunky, traveling abroad to arrange the slaying of his old teacher, who's now a political refugee. Avvicinare il quadri, ispirargli fiducia, entrare nell'organizzazione, cercare di scoprire i suoi corrispondenti qui in Italia. Sì, 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 superbo. The political drama serves as a criticism of fascism and its advocates, examining the characters' beliefs about politics, love, family and death when faced with repression and oppression. Guardiamoci bene negli occhi. Questa è una guerra. E chi mole un disertore. From a technical standpoint, The Conformist is visually stunning with the use of light, camera angles and character positioning. <laughs> and it's this combination that creates a beautiful, surreal experience. Number 7, L'Aventura. Sandro, dove andate? A gripping sense of uneasiness, isolation, and moral decay haunt the viewer of this adventure drama. E pensare che se c'è una donna fatta apposta, proprio tagliata su misura, per un genere di sregolatezze, di tradimenti. During a Mediterranean boating trip with her lover Sandro and her best friend Claudia, Anna goes missing. Ragazzi, cerchiamo di essere pratici. La cosa migliore è che voi altri andiate nell'isola più vicina. Ci sarà un comando dei carabinieri, della finanza o che diavolo so io. 
The film's focus then turns to the relationship forming between Sandro and Claudia, as the two seem to forget about the lost Anna, and in turn, so do the viewers. Now, oh, Claudia, send me. Sandro, per favore, te lo chiedo per favore. Prometi che non mi cercherai. Non devi cercarmi più. Perché, Claudia, perché? With complex shots and beautiful cinematography, L'Aventura is not for everyone. But with a little patience, and perhaps multiple viewings to really grasp every meticulous detail, the viewer will be rewarded with a tremendous cinematic experience. La prego. Cosa c'entra in tutto questo? Venga. Number six, La Dolce Vita. Marcello, come here. Hurry up. Fellini puts on a show with the decadent lifestyle of the wealthy here. The comedy drama follows a series of events in which paparazzo Marcello Rubini is slowly consumed by the riches and wealth he reports on. Self-indulgence leads to self-loathing, and so the portrait is painted of an intelligent yet shallow man. Tu, mezzo impotente come uomo e come artista, quando io spegnerò la luce, coraggio, salta il fosso. D'accordo. Characters with detestable qualities flood the screen, yet their every action has us glued to them. Such is the magnificence of Fellini and the cast. Tutta questa gente, queste grida, mi fanno impressione. The film itself is a wondrous exploration of the good life. I like lots of things, but there are three things I like most. Love, love, and love. Number five, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Sergio Leone's sprawling spaghetti western follows three gunslingers looking for $200,000 in stolen gold buried in a remote cemetery. Clint Eastwood stars as The Good, otherwise known as the man with no name, and the one with a sense of honor. Such ingratitude after all the times I've saved your life. Lee Van Cleef's The Bad is a ruthless killer looking out for himself. You know that. No! Angelon! <laughs> and Eli Wallach is Tuco, the ugly, representing humanity's unpleasant side as he's driven by impulse and rage, stealing and lying to get his way. Whoever double-crosses me and leaves me alive, he understands nothing about Tuco. <laughs> Masterful storytelling and pacing make the film's epic length fly by, with an iconic score by Ennio Morricone that adds to every scene. Creating a mood that draws the viewer in and never lets go. You see, in this world, there's two kinds of people, my friend. Those with loaded guns, and those who dig. You dig. Number four, Nuovo Cinema Paradiso. A love letter to movies, Giuseppe Tornatore's Nuovo Cinema Paradiso follows the life of filmmaker Salvatore Toto Di Vita. Pam, pam, pam. Prima spara, poi benza. In the first part of the drama, we see young Toto fall in love with movies as he forms a bond with Alfredo, the local theater's projectionist. Questi sono i bollettini di verifica delle pellicole. Si conservano sempre. Va bene, Alfredo. In later parts, we witness the tragic love story blossoming between Toto and Elena. Ma io non sono innamorata di te. Simple and straightforward, with amazing visuals and a terrific musical score, this cinematic masterpiece will have you laughing and crying as memories of the past and pure emotion take over. Number three, life is beautiful. Buongiorno, principessa. Winner of three Oscars, including Best Foreign Language Film, Life is Beautiful isn't your typical World War II film. Noi siamo, siamo tutti concorrenti, no? Hai capito? È tutto organizzato. Oh. Poi ci sono eh, gli uomini di qua, le donne di là, e poi ci sono i soldati. A blend of simple comedy and drama breathes emotion and life into every scene, 
as the carefree Jewish bookkeeper Guido, played masterfully by Roberto Benigni, finds love and a family before German forces occupy Italy and send him, his wife, and his son to a concentration camp. To survive the camp and to hide the horrors of war from his son, Guido presents their situation as a game. It's a simple but touching tale about the human spirit, where a man does everything in his power to protect his family. Number two, eight and a half. From the opening dream sequence in which a man is trapped in his car, viewers know they're about to go on an exhilarating ride into the mind of Fellini with this comedy drama. The man in question is Guido Anselmi, a film director preparing to shoot a new big budget film. Vede il film. Questo film io voglio farlo. Ho rinviato di 15 giorni l'inizio solo perché This large task, along with the expectations of his crew and the difficulties of marriage, take a toll on him, and he resorts to dreams and fantasies as a way to cope. Ma che cos'è questo posto? Come ti trovi qui? Shot in black and white with beautiful images and a mesmerizing score, Eight and a Half serves as a journey into the consciousness of a man who's trying to make sense of his life. Volevo fare un film onesto, senza bugie di nessun genere. Mi pareva di avere qualcosa di così semplice, così semplice da dire. Before we reveal our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. <laughs> Number one, Bicycle Thieves. From a powerful social commentary to the relationship between a father and son, Vittorio De Sica's Bicycle Thieves succeeds on many levels. After the bicycle that's vital to his job is stolen, a man and his son undertake a grueling search throughout Rome. Though the film is filled with a myriad of brilliant scenes, none is as poignant as the neo-realist drama's restaurant sequence, in which the two dine excitedly, with the father sharing a resonating quote. For over six decades, this film has stood the test of time showering the viewer with a rainbow of emotions. Something as simple as a bike can mean the world to someone. And thanks to this film, it does to us. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite Italian film? For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. <laughs> Fine.